Good day, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 20th day of April. And as you can tell, I'm still not fully recovered with my voice yet, so won't be singing with the Scripture songs, but we'll play them for you. And won't be doing any hymn singing today, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to do that again soon, too, and add that back to the broadcast. So, um, but praise the Lord, I'm still able to uh, talk somewhat, so I can give you the um, devotional topics at least. Amen. So, um... But uh, before I get started on all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. And hope and pray he's your Lord and Savior today. And today's topic for the Baptist bread will be titled, Why Are They Booing? So we'll get into that here in a few minutes. But first, we'll uh, start with the scripture song, and you can enjoy listening to Brother Dean and Sister Patty sing, and you can sing along with them if you uh, desire to do so. And that's from John 10. 27 to 29. Again, I apologize for not singing along, but uh, perhaps didn't have a very good singing voice anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll spare you that. Amen. All right, here we go. <clears throat> John 10, 27 through 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Amen. My Father, which That's gave right. me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. That's right. Praise God for that. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Hallelujah for that. Amen. yesterday's and we'll listen to those again towards the end of the broadcast and uh amen for scripture songs by brother dean and sister patty all right so now it's time to get into today's baptist bread for wednesday april 20th titled why are they booing in the passages from john fifteen nineteen b it says because ye are not of the world but i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hateth you john fifteen nineteen b and so let me go ahead and get the whole entirety of the passage here. All right, so John 15. All right, read this to you really quick. All right, John 15. And what did it say? 26. No, no. Uh, 19. All right, so 19. Let's go back here and get some context. All right, so... See, where can I go back here? All right, let's just go back to the beginning. I'll just read this whole entirety to you. All right, so chapter 15, verse 1 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is with withered, and men gather them, 
and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So if any, so let me read that again. If a man abide not in me, I think I misread that. So if a man, a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another, even, or excuse me, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the work the works which none other man did they had not had sin, but now or but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father, but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Amen. And that's the entirety of John chapter 15. So I wanted to read that in its context, because that's Jesus speaking there. Amen. All right, now let's get into the topic. Why are they booing? And the main uh, verse here is verse 19b from John 15. And the author today is LP. That would be the initials for, let's see, LP. That's uh, Brother Luke Putnam, Putnam. And he's from Private Providence Baptist College in Ingen, Illinois. E, let me make sure I'm saying that right here. Or Elgin, sorry, Elgin, Illinois. E L G I N, Illinois. So let me read you what he wrote on this topic of why are they booing? The world hates our God. Mm -hmm. Yes, it sure does. We are not of the world. Amen. We are on a different team. As souls are saved, our team scores and the grandstands of heaven explode and rejoicing in the angels' presence for so great a cause as ours. Why in the world, uh, why is the world booing? So for so great a cause as ours, why is the world booing? First, remember that we are the away team. We are not playing in our home stadium in the eyes of the world. Our team weary, wears dingy gray travel jerseys. They will never look on us with fondness, for we oppose everything they promote. Secondly, they jeer simply because we are up to bat. If we step up to the plate, 
endeavoring to make an impact for Christ, the world and the devil will take notice, and they hate us. Reggie Jackson once said, Fans don't boo nobodies. Hmm. Another reason why the world is jeering is because we are scoring runs. The world cannot stop the gospel's power to change the eternal destiny of a sinner, right? Uh, with each advancement of the cause of Christ comes a defeat for the opposition. Lastly, we are jeered because we are on the winning side. Amen. Our captain assures us, I have overcome the world. The enemy knows the final outcome. His team loses. One day we will return home to put on our immortal white home jerseys. As we enter the pearly gates, the cheering of our home crowd will crescendo, and our captain will greet us with our reward. Stay up to bat, Christian. We have home field advantage in Game 7. <laughs> Amen. It's an interesting way of putting, putting that. Amen. So, praise the Lord that we're on the winning side, and Jesus wins, so we get the ultimate victory. Amen. So, keep that in mind. As you're going through your day-to-day -day life, you might not always uh, win those daily battles, but in the overrun of it all, we do win the ultimate battle. Amen. So, praise God for that. All right, now it's time to get into the Boots on the Ground devotional topic. It's uh, from the book Daily Devotions for the Christian Soldier by Randy Wells. And today's um, topic is titled Setting the Example. And this takes place on April 20th, 1789. And the passage is from 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 9. It says, Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you, to follow us, Second Thessalonians three nine, and so example is plural for example. Amen. All right, here we go. Read the topic here. It says on twenty April seventeen eighty nine, George Washington was sworn in as America's first president. He set many presidents, uh, which presidents have followed for over two hundred years. Some pres presidents become came tradition, like adding the phrase, so help me God, to the end of the inaugural oath. Others have made their way into official policy, such as a two-term limit on presidential service. One president uh, that Washington established first took place while he served as commander of the Con Continental Army during the Revolution. Washington issued a general order from Valley Forge that directed divine services be performed every Sunday at 11 in those brigades to which there are chaplains. Those which have none chaplains attend the places of worship nearest them. It is expected that officers of all ranks will be there, or uh, excuse me, it is expected that officers of all ranks will by their attendance set an example to their men. General Washington not only recognized the importance of providing religious services to his troops, but he also understood the need to be the example in attending the services, right? So, not uh, just send them to services, but be an example by attending those services. People do what people see. Amen? So, people do what people see. Thus, Christians who lead should make church attendance a priority not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Hebrews 10.25 That is why it's so important to be in church around other believers, and when you think you can do it yourself and be by yourself, that's when the devil and the world and the flesh get the best of you, so let's make sure that when uh, we're trying to lead other people that we be a good example to them. Amen. Uh, leading them the right way to the right ways of the Lord. All right. Continue on. It says, "Be being present when your church family gathers is a way for a Christian to serve and to fellowship with other believers. Amen for that. So if you're a believer out there and you're like, well, I don't want to go to church because so-and-so did this or they're all hypocrites or, or they're all, um, you know, so fanatical with all their rules and regulations and stuff. Well, <laughs> We do it because God 
uh, says we're to do it, and we do it to be obedient to the Lord, and we do it to show us, show him that we love him, and if you don't want to show that you, uh, um, love him, then you can just do whatever you want, I mean, nobody's stopping you, so, but, uh, amen, I mean, you know, there's times where I even do what I want, and I'm disobedient to the Lord, I know I'm not always 100% obedient, which, you know, is a shame, because we're all disobedient in some form or fashion, so, amen. All right, so again, being present when your church family gathers is a way for a Christian to serve and to fellowship with other believers. For military personnel and first responders, church attendance may not always be possible because of the duties they have to protect and serve. However, each Christian should strive for a time to worship and be a part of a church family. Your faithful example in the church goes a long way to encouraging those who are coming behind you to be faithful as well. Amen for that. So let's be a good example to others, even new believers. Amen. All right. So that's the end of the boots on the ground. And now we'll go ahead and play the scripture songs again before we wrap it up. Amen. So I'll do yesterday's and then conclude with today's. <clears throat> Isaiah 26, 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Amen. His mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. That's right. Let's make sure our minds are stayed on him. Thou wilt keep him mm -hmm. in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on thee. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusted in thee. He trusted in thee. Because he trusted in thee, he trusted in thee, he trusted in thee, because he trusted in thee. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusted in thee, he trusted in thee, because he trusted in thee. Trusted in thee, trusted in thee, because he trusted in thee. Amen. All right, now we'll conclude with today's. John 10, 27 through 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all. And no, no man, man is able, able to plug them out of my father's hand. Amen. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them. for today's broadcast um so uh, before i go let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then tomorrow's uh topics for the baptist bread and the boots on the ground so tomorrow will be the 21st and we'll be singing ecclesiastes three fourteen. it says i know that whatsoever god doeth it shall be forever nothing can be put to it nor anything taken from it and god doeth it that men should fear before him amen so That'll be tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's 
Boots on or Baptist, Baptist Bread, excuse me, Baptist Bread is titled uh, Reg, Regolito. Uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Regolito, it's R I G O L E T T O. And so that will be tomorrow's topic. Interesting uh, word there. And the passage is from Acts 1126b. So we'll find out more about this Regolito or Reg. Regolito, or however you say that. All right, so interesting title. All right, so that's the Baptist bread, and then the boots on the ground topic for tomorrow will be titled. Uh, let's see, I'll go back to the page here. All right, so tomorrow's topic for the twenty-first from the boots on the ground is titled "Freedom from Bondage." Amen. So we'll find out about that, and that takes place on April twenty-first. 1861, and the passage is from 1 Corinthians 10, 13. So that will be tomorrow's Boots on the Ground. And then uh, maybe I'll be able to sing a hymn tomorrow. Amen. We'll see what happens. All right. And if you want to get a copy of the Scripture Songs book and the CDs, are available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And the uh, back of the cover has all the CDs, all the covers there. And that's that information, and uh, they are missionaries to poor Kaituma, Guyana, so keep them in your prayers and all missionaries around the world. And you too can be a bold witness in your own backyard by going and telling somebody about Jesus today, amen? And then the Baptist Bread devotional books, you can get a subscription going online at www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And then we have the <coughs> Boots on the Ground book. Here is the cover. That's available on the internet. And then finally, uh, the book I use here when I do the hymns is this big, thick hymnal book right here. It's called Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs. And they got lots of hymns in here and stories on some of these hymns and the writers. and Got all sorts of references on the side and other extra things. So praise the Lord for that. And I believe they're making a large print edition of the book. So you can probably get a copy of that now or pre-order one so amen and also um lord willing i'll be able to do this again uh been going through uh gibbs understandable history of the bible special broadcast been reading through that book and uh so check that out and then also been doing uh heroes of the christian faith uh stories uh reading books on different heroes of the christian faith and reading through secret believers which is a book written by brother andrew and uh al jansen and um did the Hiding Place about Corey Tenboon, and then the Return to the Hiding Place, which was Hans Pillay's story, and then did God's Smuggler, which was Brother Andrew's story. So you can check those out at God's uh, Lighthouse Pod or God's Messenger Lighthouse Podcast um, on Anchor or Spotify. Amen. So check that out if you like to hear audiobooks, or you can also get your own copy of the book. Uh, recommend them; they're good, good uh, stories there. Amen. So praise the Lord. All right, well, that'll be it for today. So thanks for watching. May the Lord richly bless you. Until next time, bye for now.